right, so I know we're a little bit late to the party, but today we're going to be talking about the new PlayStation Plus subscription Game Pass competitor that Sony wants to consider as a Game Pass competitor, and also talk about the the different pricings and the different features that you get with this new PlayStation Plus service, and also tell our personal take with the service at the end. So, make sure to stay tuned in for the video, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to this channel, and also be sure to leave us a comment down in the comment section down below of your thoughts of this new PlayStation Plus service that Sony has announced just this past Tuesday and all that good stuff and also make sure to hit that like button but yeah on Tuesday it was a leak last week that Sony was going to be indeed this week announcing something for a Game Pass competitor for Microsoft Xbox Game Pass and lucky enough they surely did and honestly it just, I'll just say it right now, I'm not very happy with this kind of service, and I don't even use Xbox Game Pass, and I personally don't like Game Pass, but when it comes to between PlayStation's new service and Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass has definitely got the win, but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and show you the different PlayStation Plus tiers and what the pricing is and what sh what you get with each of the three tiers when it comes to features wise and all that about it so let's jump right on over to the playstation plus service that sony has just announced so here is the new service that sony has officially announced with their upgrade playstation plus tiers so it says all new PlayStation Plus launches in June with 700 plus games and more value than ever before. Now that's kind of strange that they say more value than ever before. Because if you honestly think about it, like, yeah, Sony does have 700 plus games from current generation all the way to like previous generations. But... They do not have PlayStation 1 games, and they do not do first, you know, day one releases for especially their first party games like Microsoft does with Xbox Game Pass. So, it's kind of a bit strange that they're saying more value than ever, even though I personally still think that the value is on Microsoft Game Pass, even though they don't have quite as many games, but they still got like 200 at least games and whatnot to choose from and you still get you know day one releases coming to the service like halo infinite and forza horizon 5 which were big you know microsoft exclusives and literally they came to the game pass on day one and you got even future titles like sniper elite 5 and also starfield which is a big game which a lot of people is really really hyped up for and you got that game also coming to Xbox Game Pass day one. So, it's kind of a bit strange when they say more value than ever, like, when you compare to Microsoft Game Pass. But, as it stated, since launching the PlayStation Plus in 2010, Sony Interactive Entertainment has been at the forefront of innovation with game services, we are thrilled to be the first console membership service that include a refresh of library of games through PlayStation Plus and also launched the first console game streaming service with PlayStation Now. And that is kind of correct that they are the first, you know, company that has done like game streaming and all that. But PlayStation Now, I've been here and it's not really the best because of the fact that like at first it was just streaming games you couldn't even download them and now you can download playstation 4 and playstation 2 classics on your playstation 4 console but if you wanted to play a ps3 game it, you have to literally stream it and that's what it was 
before. And then it says, today we are pleased to share with you official news about changes coming to our subscription service. This June, we're bringing together PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now and an all-new PlayStation Plus subscription service that provides more choice to customers across three membership tiers globally. Our focus on providing high-quality curated content with a diverse portfolio of games below and overall of the three membership tiers. So... It's just really kind of odd, but we'll start off with the first one. But as you can see, this is the first one of the tier. It's PlayStation Plus Essential. So basically what this one is, is basically just the current PlayStation Plus that we have had for pretty much ever since PlayStation Plus was a thing back in 2010. So this is just the current standard PlayStation Plus as of right now. And... As you know, it provides the same benefits that PlayStation Plus members are getting today, such as two monthly downloadable games, which that right there is a bit off because Sony has actually been giving out three to four PlayStation Plus games a month, and they've been getting like two PlayStation 4 games and sometimes even three PS4 games and one PlayStation 5 game. So most of the time Sony has been given out a minimum of three games so you get two PS4 and one PlayStation 5 title and there's been some cases that Sony has given three PS4 games and one PlayStation 5 game and sometimes even two PS5 games but it would also be count as a PS4 title especially like Dirt 5 which that was definitely a great PlayStation Plus game that they gave out basically about a few months ago but you get two monthly downloadable games, which is kind of false. You get like three or four, unless they're only going to do PS5 games here real soon when the service starts. And you get exclusive discounts, which we've always had. Cloud storage for saved games, which that's kind of a bit strange that they don't allow that for free like Nintendo and Microsoft does. But it's kind of a bit strange. And then online multiplayer access. These are no changes for existing PlayStation Plus members in this tier. So this is basically the standard PlayStation Plus. And this is the United States, well, basically Europe and United Kingdom and, you know, Japan and all that. But we're technically focusing on the U.S., but if you're from Europe or United Kingdom, here's your also, you know, pricing. But for the United States... Where we currently live at, it's the same $9.99 a month and $24.99 quarterly and $60 yearly. Which, $60 a year, honestly, it's really not that bad, honestly. But it's still really good overall. But like I mentioned, this is just the standard PlayStation Plus. But while well, we'll go over one more time, but as you can see, it's $10 a month and $25 every three months, and then $60 basically a year. And then here's where things get a little bit out of hand. Now, the next benefit tier is called PlayStation Plus Extra. So this one is, it provides all the benefits from the essential tier, adds a catalog up to 400 of the most enjoyable PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games, including blockbuster hits from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party partners, games in the extra tier are downloadable to play so basically what this one is is it lets you have the ability to play current gen and last generation games even though they just currently have ps4 games as of right now but ps5 games will come to this tier as time goes on and you'll have more games to play when developers release more games but this tier as you can tell for the united states and europe and all the other places as you see right here but the United States where we're at it is going to be $15 a month $40 every three months and $100 a year now that's basically only 40 extra dollars and you're getting over 400 plus PS4 and PS5 games if I was to say anything I would probably say the PlayStation Plus extra is probably the best out of the three tiers honestly 
even over this one, but this is the one that it gets very, very interesting. Yeah, PlayStation Plus Premium, which this is the third top-of-the-line tier that Sony has announced, this one gets absolutely interesting. So it says, it provides all the benefits from the essential and extra tiers, which we already know that, and it says it adds up to 340 additional games, including PS3 games available via cloud streaming. That's where it kind of gets a little bit interesting if you think about it. So, the PlayStation 3, the reason why Sony does not want to do backwards compatibility or, you know, let people play the games, you know, basically downloaded, is because they, they make it up and say that it is the architecture in the PlayStation 3, but you got basically, you know, modders that are out there, or not modders, uh, whatever the term of it is, um, freaking emulators, that's what it are. You got people that are emulators out there that work with PCs that literally have less specs than something like a base PlayStation 4 that can play the PS3 games at 60 frames a second, and they could, they can literally play the game without any issues. So, it is kind of a bit strange that Sony won't do anything to implement, you know, the option to download your PlayStation 3 games and play them directly off the hard drive, which, honestly, like, they can honestly do it, it's just, I personally think that they just, they just don't want to do it because, you know, they just don't want to pay the money, or it just takes too much time, and, you know, they, they, they just don't want to do it, because they want people to buy their new stuff and not play the old stuff and remaster you and sell you old games. That's most likely the reason as to why Sony does not do backwards compatibility or at least allow PS3 games to be downloadable. Because if you really think about it, The Last of Us Remastered got available for the PS4 with, you know, especially the PS4 Pro, 4K, and high frame rate enhancements. Then you got the Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection, which is the three classics that were originally released on the PS3 that you can get on the PS4 and play them at, like, higher, you know, fidelity with, like, 1080p resolution with higher, you know, detail on the graphics. And there's some other games that you can literally play just as well. And you got God of War 3, which is another PS3 game that got remastered for the PS4. And... There's actually quite a bit more than just those ones, but those are the big ones as of right now. So, they just, that's pretty much what I think is the whole deal. Is like, they don't want to do it, they want to make the developers remake them, and then sell you the same game, and it's kind of, it's definitely kind of bullshit, if you honestly really ask me. But moving on to the next one, and it says, A catalog of beloved classic games, available in both streaming and and download options from the original PlayStation, PS2, and PSP generations offers cloud streaming across the original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers and markets. While where the PlayStation Now is currently available, customers can stream using PS4 and PS5 games, or PS5 consoles, and PC. Time-limited game trials will also be offered in this tier so customers can try select games before they buy. Now, that's another one that also is a bit strange. So, they're basically letting you get demos and trials for games, basically, if you have this service. And especially, like, that that kind of stuff should be offered for free no matter what the odds are. Because that's considered what trials and demos are, is for people to try out the games and literally play like the first two missions and to see if they like it and if they do then they could go out and buy it so that's kind of a bit strange that Sony is charging for you to basically try out games so you can basically pay on them twice pay for a trial and pay for the full price of the game that's that's kind of a bit strange if you honestly ask me but here are the prices for the three tiers. As you can see for the US, it is $17.99 monthly, 
forty nine ninety nine every three months and one hundred nineteen ninety nine yearly. So this is probably the one that I would probably say is not the worth. Is not the worth. You know, it's not worth it. Is what I mean to say. This one is definitely not worth it. The PlayStation Plus Premium, because you get to try, you get to play PS3 games, cloud streaming, not downloadable, and you get time limited game trials that will be offered for this tier. So, those two reasons right there PS Plus games, or PS3 games, I mean, via cloud streaming, and time limited game trials only for this premium tier, I would. If I was you, if you want something, your best choice is to get the PlayStation Plus here. Now, you won't get access to PS2 or PS1 you know, one games like that come on in the future, but you still will have access to all the PlayStation 4 games that are on there and future PlayStation 5 games coming to the service as time goes on. So, yeah, I would honestly say probably the PlayStation Plus Extra is probably the best here, I would honestly say, if you want something better than the current PS Plus, but I'm telling you, like, this is just absolutely insane, and Sony has literally thrown shade at the consumer once more, so, yeah, this is not a really good service. So, that right there is the new PlayStation Plus tiers basically as what they call a game pass competitor to microsoft xbox game pass and as you can tell the service ain't going to be that good especially for the third expensive highest tier on the service now for current playstation plus users you'll still get the option to basically be able to pay just a 60 dollars yearly just to play you know access to all of your friends online party chats and online gaming and also get the your monthly free games every month so i personally say the standard ps plus and the ps plus extra is probably your best option but the playstation plus premium it's a completely it's a completely flop and dumpster fire that sony has basically throw shade at us consumers because not only you can't download PlayStation 3 games, which majority of the games that is on the PlayStation Now service are PlayStation 3 games. Literally. They are dr mostly PlayStation 3 games. At least half of the games are. And not being able to download them and play them directly from the hard drive, that that's a kind of a bit fishy when you got... Microsoft on the Xbox, and this even includes the based Xbox One. So if you still have a based Xbox One, the less powerful, you know, console of the last generation, you're still able to play Xbox 360 games directly from the console and original Xbox games directly from the console. And they may not look as, you know, good as playing them like on something like a Series S or Series X or One X, but you still have the option to play the games directly on the console itself if you have Xbox Game Pass and they're on Game Pass. So, this is definitely a much still of a win for Microsoft. And then here's also what you got to also look at too. Microsoft only offers $10 a month. $15 a month also if you want the ultimate and you get almost 200 games you get online multiplayer and you get monthly games just as much and you get also EA titles because EA play is on the service so you basically get a lot more for the value when it comes to Xbox Game Pass over this new PlayStation Plus service, and this is coming from somebody who does not do or like Xbox Game Pass all that much, and this is me that is telling you that Xbox Game Pass is definitely a much better value and better option because 
you have more freedom with this one because you get to have access to all kinds of games from the previous generations. And I think there's even some Series X games on there right now, like Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon 5, which those games came out day one. And Jim Ryan basically made a statement stating that they don't think that their you know first party games should go to the service day one because they don't get much more of this which is understandable in to a degree microsoft does have way 10 times more money than what sony has in the bank so microsoft can take big losses and still be rich and sony just is more of the money and which that's what led us to this point from the PS4 from 2013 when Sony was pro-consumer and ended up being now anti-consumer because of their success. So, honestly, I, I just hope Sony eventually does something and eventually lets, you know, does something to help PlayStation 3 games be able to download on especially the PS5. Now, the PS4, maybe not. They're we could see a point there, but the PlayStation 5 can absolutely play PlayStation 3 games with no problem. And it's just Sony just doesn't want to do it because it costs them money or they can just remake the games so they can sell them over and over and over, especially like games like The Last of Us Remastered, which is also getting remaked again for the PlayStation 5 that we're hearing and the Uncharted Nathan Dre collection which is also another rumor that we're hearing that is going to get remaked for the PlayStation 5 so like that's just basically what Sony does they just want to resell you the same product over and over and over and honestly it's a bit it's a bit of a shame to tell you the truth but yeah those right there are the three PlayStation Plus tiers, and honestly, uh, Xbox Game Pass is still superior over PlayStation, unless PlayStation ends up making up, you know, with the PlayStation 3 and figures out an emulator to implement on the PlayStation 5 via the firmware update that fully allows people to download their PlayStation 3 games and directly play them on the PlayStation 5 through the console itself. So, but the, also the last part of this story too is time get limited game time trials. That should be a free no matter what the odds are. I mean, look at Microsoft. Microsoft's given out Halo Infinite free to play if you just want the multiplayer. But if you have Game Pass, you get the multiplayer and as well as the campaign. But if you don't have Game Pass, you get to try out Halo Infinite's multiplayer and see if you want to check out the campaign. So, but this ain't the only thing. There's other games that have free demos, free trials, and that pers basically just lets you play like the first two missions and lets you find out if you're going to get that game or not. So, this is a bit strange that Sony is wanting to charge you to play trials and then charge you again to buy the game. That definitely right there is a big anti-consumer move, especially. So, if I was you and you're really hyped up and you like this new PlayStation Plus service, which I'm hearing a lot of the fans are really disappointed with, but if you do, if you want the best here possible, PlayStation Plus uh, Extra is probably the best one that I would personally say, especially because you get access to PS4 games that are currently on there and then future PS5 games and you get to download them and play them at any point in, in time. So I would honestly either stick with your current PlayStation Plus Essential like paying for it or if you want the extra go for the PlayStation Plus tier um, extra but do not get the PlayStation Plus Premium. It is a completely dumpster fire. You're just getting pretty much as you would get with the PlayStation Plus Extra. And there's even people out there that don't even have that good enough internet to even stream. Even our internet that is 200 megs of download speed is not even enough to basically stream games. Games get blurry is from what I'm hearing like when you stream a PS3 game. And I tried it out on my PlayStation 4 Pro 
a few years ago with Red Dead Redemption 1 off the PS3 on the PS Now service. And yeah, it definitely does not play that good, and it definitely does not look that sharp either. So, Sony, you better figure out something in the future, because PlayStation 3 is still in an important hardware of games that we currently own. So, yeah, Xbox Game Pass is still in the lead when it comes to downloading games and much more for the value. But this is Tekken Gaming Reviews. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you guys could, smack that like button and also be sure to hit that subscribe button and also leave us a comment down in the comment section down below of your thoughts with this new PlayStation Plus service and if you like the service or if you honestly personally agree that Xbox Game Pass is a much better service than this new PlayStation Plus, PlayStation Now service that Sony wants to call the next PlayStation Plus. So yeah, just send us a comment down in the comment section down below and hit that like button if you enjoy this video and be sure to subscribe if you are new and we will see you guys on the next video. Peace.